Assalamu alaikum. Let us stand for prayer, brothers and sisters. Here at Muhammad's Mosque, we're taught to pray towards the east, which is the conference room, because this is where the blessings of Almighty God, Allah, uh, come from, where our prophets come from, where we turn and we face uh, the Kaaba in the holy city of Mecca. And this is also where the sun rises uh, in the east. And the scripture says that the son of man coming from the east, even unto the west, so shall the coming of the son of man be. So this is why we face uh, the east. And we bow our heads with our palms faced up, ready to receive the blessings of Almighty God, Allah. Prayer. Surely I turn myself to thee, O Allah, trying to be upright to him who originate the heavens and the earth, and I'm not from among the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Nor so she has he, and this am I commanded. I'm of those who submit. O oh, Allah, thou the king, and there is no God but thee. Thou my Lord, and I am thy servant. I've been greatly unjust to myself when I confess my faults. Grant me protection against all my faults, for none grant protection against faults with thee. And guide me, Allah, to the best of morals, for none guides into the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and indecent morals, for none can turn away the evil and indecent morals but thee. O oh, Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true and faithful followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham and the true and faithful followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou are praised and magnified. And O oh Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true and faithful followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true and faithful followers of Abraham, for surely thou are praised and magnified in thy midst. Amen. That means, amen means so be it. You may be seated. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah who appeared to us in the person of Master Father Muhammad. I bear witness in his messenger Messiah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I further bear witness in their divine reminder, servant, warner, and Jesus in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I greet you all, my brothers and sisters, once again this morning with the greeting words of peace. We said in the Arabic language of assalamu alaikum. And that just simply means peace. Uh, be unto you, uh, brothers and sisters. But it's not a phrase that we should take lightly because we should always ask for God's peace because he is the one who is the granter of peace. Even though my wife can and thank Allah that, that, that she gives me peace, but it is only Allah in her that can give me that peace and, and, vice, and vice versa, meaning that we're growing and we're evolving. Uh, into his attributes, and it is we who display those attributes. So, brothers and sisters, welcome to Muhammad Mosque, number 45, the Southwest Regional Headquarters of the Nation of Islam. And we came, we came out to Mosque today for guidance to bring about a change in our lives. The power to change is in our hands. For Allah says in the Quran, surely Allah changes not the condition of a people until they change their own condition, what is within themselves. So brothers and sisters, our communities are a reflection of our thinking. Our houses are a reflection of our thinking. So the argument was far said, if we live life in a negative way under the influences of our life force and will not struggle to master it, then we become a devil in our person. We become an opposer to the will of our God in our person. And that's what we see throughout America and the world, but in particular, the black community. However, when you come to the mosque, and this is important that we understand this concept. When you come to the mosque, you meet the idea of God in your brothers and sisters. When you come to the mosque, Allah in the person of Master Father Muhammad set up our structure. When you come to the mosque, you get the greetings of peace. Not a greeting of chaos or a greeting just, just, what's up, man? How you doing? Right? But you get a greeting of peace. 
And it's important to understand that when you come to the mosque, you are coming into a new mindset. And I know we do it all the time. Well, I gotta go to the, I'm going to the mosque again because we become comfortable with what we think we know. But there's so many principles that are connected when you step between those doors. But then when you leave, you don't become a non-Muslim when you leave the mosque and you shouldn't become a Muslim when you come to the mosque. That the, the prophet people upon him say that the whole earth is the mosque. So it's the idea of what is at the root of the mosque that this mosque, this human body, that is the greatest temple on earth. I've been to Mecca. I walked around the Kaaba. I see how they were fighting over the black stone just to kiss, just to kiss the black stone. I said, well, shucks, you doing all that fight. You can just come fight and kiss on me. Because I'm greater than the black stone, right? Because you got to clean that black stone. I can clean myself. But the concept, the principles of understanding is where a lot of times we're falling short. See, how do you know you have the truth? Put it to practice. It's not just about acquiring knowledge. I know this, I know this, I know this. But what it's about is taking what you know and putting it to practice and becoming a reflection of what it is we say we believe in. So when you come to the mosque, you're coming to God's idea of a new world. Oh, you didn't hear me. When you come to the mosque, you're coming to God's idea of a new reality. When you come to the mosque, you're coming to God's idea of a new human being. That will one day, in the process of will rule everything. Oh, you should be excited about that, brothers and sisters. Praise it be to Allah. But when you come to the mosque, you meet the idea of God and your brothers and sisters. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, and our Savior has arrived, Allah is all of us. He is rooted in all of us. Every righteous person is a God. But then look what he says, but we're all God, and he uses a capital G. See, individually, we are a God, but together we are God. So he makes a clear distinction in his writing that when we work together, we are the big G. But each little G have to come in line, come in the mind of the way that we are being trained by God. So Jesus said in the scriptures, the Jews said to him, but for blasphemy because you are a man declaring yourself to be God. And look at Jesus' words. Jesus replied, is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. If, ye, if he called the gods to whom the word God came and the scripture cannot be broken. So the scripture tells you through the mouth of Jesus quoting the law that ye are all gods. So Allah would not change the condition of us until we change what is in our own hearts. And this is why, brothers and sisters, we come to the nation of Islam. We come to the mosque to have a cleansing of the heart. The enemy like to say, you come, you go in there to be brainwashed. <laughs> Well, looking at our communities and coming here, we need our brains washed. <laughs> and Allah has blessed us with the right man to wash our brains. And just the beauty of the security of knowing that we are following a human being that we had a chance to see on Sunday. A beautiful human being in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who went four and a half hours uplifting us, getting us to look at ourselves. But you know what I noticed about in his talk? How he was focused on self and talking about himself and his self was elevating myself. 
so that and it was elevating yourself. So that tells us there's a connection between his self and our self, and that connection is God. Oh, brothers and sisters. So the Uncle Mr. Farrakhan said, our whole psyche, our whole mind, your process of thinking has to be changed because you are able to master whatever you put in your heart and mind too. And you can master it with degrees of excellence. So the nation of Islam is your example. For Allah says in the Holy Quran, certainly there is for you in them an excellent example for him who hopes for Allah in the last day. That the nation of Islam is the example. That the nation of Islam is the prototype of a new world. So when you come to the mosque, you're not just entering into a church building. When you come to the mosque, you are coming into the borders of a new world where the idea of God is present and the idea of God is being carried out to where you are now have an opportunity to be formed into that idea and take on God's coloring. And in taking on God's coloring, you begin now to look different. You begin to add more years onto your life. Regardless if you come in in your 70s or 80s or 90s, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said you add more time onto your life. If you look at the minutes, he said, I'm creeping up on 90. But did you see how beautiful the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan looked? So, brothers and sisters, we're not at war with one another. When you come to the nation of Islam, you're coming not into a nation where there's gender war, the male against the female, the young against the younger that's getting older, right? <laughs> if you're in that state, there's still more we have to learn. Because God is present on the scene today and he's coming up out of us to show us his reality. And if you didn't see the presence of God this weekend, I know we had some technical difficulties on the screen, but go back to YouTube, it's on that. And you can see the beauty of this human being roaring like a lion. But having a good time. So brothers and sisters, may Allah bless each one of us to stay on the path of change until we reach his perfection. Allahu Akbar. So at this time, brothers and sisters, I want to bring up to the Rosh a sister in our ministry class here at Muhammad's Mosque number 45, our beloved sister, sister attorney, Sadia Kareem. Let's receive her with a round of applause. Assalamu alaikum. Wow, that was powerful. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Father Muhammad. And I also bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the exalted Christ and the Messiah. And I further bear witness that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is that little Messiah, is that Jesus in our midst. He's a divine warner, he's a guide, but also he's our comforter. And so I greet you beloveds in the words of peace and paradise of assalamu alaikum. So in keeping with that same energy about who God is and that we must be those gods in order to seek that change, I wanted to talk about the role of mother in securing our nation. Now there's a hadith, a story about a sunnah which is the life of prophet Ibn Abdullah, peace be upon him. And in this hadith, it states that a man asked the messenger of Allah, who should I give honor and good treatment to? And the prophet said, your mother. And then the man asked again, then who? And the prophet said, your mother. And then that man asked again. And the prophet again said, your mother. And then he said, who? Your father. So in this story, we see the immeasurable importance of mother. 
All right, so that was 1400 years ago. Let's fast forward it to present time. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that you don't measure civilization by the man. You measure civilization by who? The woman. He also said that a nation cannot rise higher than its woman. And so when you look at the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said that three fourths of his work was with who? Was with the woman. So do you understand the importance of woman? Now, in that teaching, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad further teaches us that when Allah created himself, now he is being taught by Allah, Master Father Muhammad, God in person. And he's getting these teachings and these scientific teachings because we can bear and, and show in no limit of time that this is the truth. That when Allah was creating himself in triple darkness, which was the universe, right? And it was just black, no light could enter, right? Nothing but dark matter. And he used his mind in order to create himself. And then what he did was he, he wanted to go back into himself, sisters. And he studied the best part of himself. And what did he draw out? What did he create from the best part of himself? And that was the original woman, right? The best part of himself, the second self of God was the black woman. So are y'all with me as you see the importance of woman? Now the Honorable Minister Louis Farris Khan teaches us that next to God, the most magnificent creature is called mother. So when you combine God and when you combine mother, then you have a future. Next to God, there is nothing more sacred, more wonderful, more powerful than mother. And anything that interferes with your ability to mother properly, sisters, then that is an enemy to God. So when we look at the mother's role, she is supremely important. She physically, emotionally, and spiritually nourishes the child to adulthood. Can we agree on that, mothers? We will give up our lives and we will sacrifice to have nothing and dedicate our lives for our children. Can you bear witness, mothers? And brothers, you can bear witness too, watching your mother. Mothers will safeguard and protect their children from all harm and danger. And we will literally lose our lives for our children. It's because the mother's love is so deeply rooted and her love is unmatched next to Allah. But ultimately and ideally, a mother's role is to bring and rear up children that will one day produce heaven on earth. And so if you know me, you know that I'm a mother with seven children. I have four girls and three boys. And so I can bear witness to being a mother. Not just the practicality of, of it, but the spiritual aspect of it, the mental aspect of it. When I came into the mosque before I became a mother, I nursed on how to give birth to a God. And so I had to use my womb, my mental and spiritual womb, which is a place, a dark place, where you can conceive ideas and manifest into the physical. So that's what I mean when I say womb, not just that physical aspect, being able to give birth to a child, but the mental one too, brothers, that you possess as well. And when I found out that I was with a female child, my baby girl, we know that in the Holy Quran, it says that male is not like female. And so the seriousness of giving birth to this child became exceedingly clear. And see, me and my husband, I was co-creating with him. He is a God. The black man is a God, right? We don't believe in a mystery God, right? No Virgin Mary that was untouched. It was him who was a God. And together we co-created this beautiful child, but also Allah blessed us to bring into existence from our spiritual hearts, other children. And so at that point, I understood the magnitude and the blessing because I know that's my superpower, y'all, is to be a mother. That job I take very seriously. And so when we look into the Holy Quran and we look into the Bible, we see that Mary or Mariam is so reared in Christianity and so revered in Islam that there is even a chapter in the Holy Quran after Mary. Is that not right? Mariam. And it was through her womb that a child, Jesus, was produced to save the whole of humanity. 
But as we are taught, Mary is not only the mother of Jesus, but she's also a sign. A sign of who? A sign of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? A sign of the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Is that right? But she's also a prototype. And who is she a prototype of? She is a prototype of us, black women, right? A woman of God, the second self of God, who can produce whatever her mind can conceive. We're taught that heaven lies at the foot of mother. That was spoken by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So how do we as men and women apply these teachings to our lives to create heaven on earth? Well, one, we must revere the womb that bore us. We must revere our mothers. We must revere the women, right? We must protect, respect, and value the woman. Sisters, listen to me clearly. We gotta clean up this temple. Not just our physical temple, sisters, but we got to clean up our hearts, right? We got to clean up our minds. We have to submit ourselves to our law because we are not man's woman. We are God's woman. Not only did Allah create us and equip us with that which can produce a physical child, but through this mind, we can create anything. Are y'all listening? Anything. And you too, brothers, when you think like Allah, because remember, he created himself from his thoughts in triple darkness. Then he was able to produce you. So if he can do that and he gave us that ability to produce from our mind and our mind's eye, then think about what are we creating? So if we are creating what comes from our mind's eye, and as Brother Eric talked about, we look in our communities and look what are we producing? Have we produced a woman that is respected? No. The woman is the most disrespected, most neglected, most devalued woman on the face of this planet. So what kind of condition are we in if we are not respecting our women? Just look in your community. But Allah came all by himself because he loved us and he wanted to heal us and he placed the woman back on top and he gave us these teachings of how to give birth to a God. So brothers, do you want hell or do you want heaven? That's right. So look here, this is where it lies. So when not only do you produce with your mind because you submit your will to Allah, you think his thoughts, you do his things, you act his ways, then you can produce heaven on earth. And sisters, you can physically produce heaven on earth if you submit your will to Allah. So let me speak to you again, brothers. Now, producing heaven on earth becomes exceedingly difficult if the woman is not in charge or in the company of a righteous, well-made man. Is that right, sisters? We're taught that there is no such thing as a no good woman. Is that right? She was made that way by a no good man. But we know that this man is God and he exhibits all the attributes of Allah if he but submits his will. So we want to be in the company and we want to be in charge of a well-made man. Is that right, sisters? And who makes well-made men? That's Allah himself. Praises be to Allah. So Mary was blessed to be a virtuous woman because she was prepared from the womb, but she was also under the authority of a righteous male figure. And this is how you must be, brothers, guarding and protecting the woman. You must maintain your post because through her, Allah's purpose will be fulfilled. Now, brothers, your mothers are sacred to you, right? And that post is a sacred post, is that right? And because you are Allah, right? God in person, in flesh, then that post is a sacred post. And women, we must understand the sacredness in the sight of Allah and understand your role to nourish, to protect, to sacrifice, and to deeply love what you produce. But you too as well, brothers. 
Although you may not be a female in the essence of a physical female, but Allah also gave you his attributes of a female as well, to deeply love, to deeply respect, to deeply sacrifice. Is that right? So you too can produce heaven on earth. And so in closing, Allah God in the person of Master Fad Muhammad, he set up a class called the Muslim Girl Training and General Civilization class. The what? The MGT and what? Come on now. So that he may place the woman back on top of the world with divine guidance and instructions. And sisters, I encourage you to rejoin your class. And I leave you with the words of a well-made man, the little Messiah, the Jesus in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, when he told us last Sunday in the swan song, he said, women are not to be played with. How are you going to deal with women if you don't know them? He said 75% of the messenger's work is with the women. And then he says this, he didn't call you out to put you over his class, meaning God's class. And then he asked the question, he said, ask about me in my class. Ask about me, meaning that he is the head of our class and he is that well-made man who comes to help bring heaven on earth. So thank a lot for this man. And so I'd like to bring up this beautiful sister who comes from a God and a co-creator, right? Who believed in these teachings enough to produce five beautiful girls who seek Allah's guidance and instruction. And when you see these beautiful daughters of theirs, you know where their hearts and their minds were. And so I'd like to bring up this beautiful sister, my little sister in the ministry, that is none other than Sister Lanicia Muhammad. So y'all, let's encourage her and let's receive her. As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum. Ah, what wonderful, wonderful energy in the name of Allah. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Father Muhammad. I bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is our living and exalting Christ. And I further bear witness that the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is our divine warner, reminder, and guidance in this day of judgment. I greet you all in the, with the nation's greeting words of peace and paradise. We say it in the Arabic language, As-salamu alaykum. First and foremost, before I get started, I would like to thank our student regional minister, Brother Halim Muhammad, for the privilege and the opportunity to share with you all today. I am grateful to Allah for the most honor for the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and for me being alive in this day and time to be able to receive such a message like the swan song that we all heard on last Sunday's praise be to Allah. So I am tasked today with um, bringing to you all my thoughts on the swan song. And although it was difficult for me to do that in the short amount of time of five hours, there is no doubt that everyone under the sound of the minister's voice, thank you, everyone under the sound of the minister's voice was transformed in those five hours, which is, when you think about it, it's not a lot of time at all for the transformation that I'm sure that we all went through. So to get started, here are three points that stood out to me. First, when he repeatedly said, I cannot live without the truth. And he instructed us to hold on to those words, regardless of what, hold on to that. I cannot live without the truth. So let's look at what the Bible and the Holy Quran says about the truth. In the Holy Quran, Surah 2, verse 42, it says, And mix not up the truth with falsehood, nor hide the truth while you know. In the Bible, the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So here we have warnings from both the Holy Quran to keep the truth pure and to stand on it. Then we have the Bible telling us that knowing the truth will set us free. After hearing the minister and his passion for the truth, after hearing the minister and his passion for the truth, it's clear that his whole existence is the truth. It's the essence of the truth. 
The minister is the purest form of the truth. He has given and continues to give his life on a daily basis for the truth. And he is a free man because of this, is he not? So what does that statement mean? I cannot live without the truth. What does that look like and how do we apply it to our lives? Everything, every aspect of my life and of your life should reflect the truth. What we say to ourselves, the goals we set, our vision boards we put up in our rooms, our conversations with people, what we watch, what we scroll through on our phones, what we listen to, everything should reflect the truth. Otherwise, how can we say we are living if we don't have the truth in front of us? The minister goes on into the meaning of the swan song. He says, let me tell you what a swan song is. And before I finish today, you are going to hear something that is for you. When you hear that note that God designed for you, hold it in your mind. If you play that note right, you might come out of death into life again. He later says, life is always presenting the living with a problem, a problem that will make you or break you. But as student minister, Brother Ishmael has been preaching for a few weeks now, you are made to conquer whatever life presents. You did it when you were sperm. Why don't you think you can do it now? Emitted into a hostile environment with a competition of 100 million to a billion other sperms who have the same thing in mind. We got to fertilize that egg. And when you made it, and I made it, and we made it, we were ready to come forth into life and face anything that life presents. And with the mind of a conqueror and the spirit of God, anything that came into our anything that came into our way in order to get to where we are today, we had to conquer. I knew that this was the note for me. It was reassurance that the trials we face and how we solve them is evidence that we are alive. The Holy Quran says in Surah 2, verse 286, Allah imposes not on any soul a duty beyond its scope. Nothing we are given, good or bad, is outside of what we can handle or conquer. And it is not outside of what Allah knows we can handle or conquer. Then the minister goes on to say that the race of life is not for the strong. The race of life is for the one, male or female, who can endure the process until you accomplish the goal for which God brought you out of your mother's womb. This is how we reach our potential. And during the process until we reach the goal God set for us, holding firm to him and putting our trust in a higher power. And again, the Holy Quran says in 256, whoever disbelieves in the devil and believes in Allah, he indeed lays a hold on them, the firmest handle, which shall never break. And Allah is hearing knowing when we make that decision on a daily basis, to disbelieve in the devil and to believe in Allah. That is Allah, us granting Allah to have that firmest hold on us that shall never break. And lastly, the minister is a manifestation of Allah's mercifulness because he gives us warnings about ourselves. He warned us not to play with Allah and not to get comfortable with sin. He says for the devil, it's natural to lie, to steal, to cheat. But you are not made like that. So when you and I go to act in the school, it shows up in our skin. It shows up in our face. And it shows up in our forehead. It shows up because that's not who you are. He reminds us to turn to a lot and only a lot in trouble, in troubled times. And he says, and some of us, we have a problem when we don't look for God. I'm sorry, and some of us, when we have a problem, we don't look for God. When you love your sin so much that nothing of conscience can rise up in you to stop you from yourself, then you're tempting God to turn you to that which you turn yourself. God is not to be played with. God is not an overcoat that you put on when it's cold outside. God is the God of truth and righteousness. He loves you, but you gotta love yourself and love yourself in order to put your sins aside and choose God every time. The minister warned us against compromising our character. He says, this is how you lose your soul when you compromise your integrity as a man, as a black man, and allow Satan to have his way with you. 
He goes on, when you start down that road, anything you compromise of your character leads to a greater compromise and a greater compromise until you are nothing. These warnings given to us by the minister shows just how merciful Allah is, that he would pick such a man to warn us about ourselves, to warn us about our shortcomings and keep us on the path that Allah ordained for us. The Holy Quran says, and certainly we sent Noah to his people. Surely I am a plain warrant to you to serve none but Allah. Verily, I fear for you the chastisement of a painful day. And that's Holy Quran, Surah 2, verses 25 and 26. The minister is that for us today. The minister is our warner. He is our guide in this day of judgment. His commitment to the truth is deep. As he says, he earned his way and is going up and yonder. His love for us is evident in these warnings against in these warnings against using our sins and these warnings against compromising our character. He is in the business of saving our souls. He is the man of God and he is our Jesus and Messiah in this day. Praise be to Allah. And brothers and sisters, please help me to receive a man whose love for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is evident in his service to the people of God. Would you please receive our student regional minister, Brother Dr. Abdul Halim Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. My beloved brothers and sisters, I am a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and what he teaches. And I can never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs and the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. The great Makti who traveled 9,000 miles to seek and to save that which was lost. We can find no other people more fitting the description of the lost sheep, the lost corn, the prodigal son, the children of Israel than the black man and the black woman of North America. We thank Allah for his demonstration of love for traveling and coming from his holy place, coming from his place of comfort, coming from the place where he would not be disrespected or have to come into anything that was unclean or other than himself. But yet out of his love and out of his mercy, this savior traveled 9,000 miles. Him being the originator of the heavens and the earth, thought, will, and mind of what a perfected man is. God is man and man is God. That's what we teach and that's what we believe here. And his coming in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, he came and he found a man on which he had to lay on him a heavy burden and give him what is called in the Holy Quran a weighty word. He had to give him the hardest job ever given to a man. And that job is the resurrection of the dead. I thank Sister Lenicia, I thank Sister Sadia, I thank Brother Eric, and I thank for those who have come before me. I thank a lot for you coming out and being with us today, and we don't intend to waste your time or to abuse you with foolish talk, but we want you to put on your thinking caps, we want you to open up your heart and your mind, and understand that we'll be talking to you about what is called the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because when Master Fahd Muhammad came to North America, when he made himself known July 4th, 1930, on the Independence Day of America, the Independence Day of this European, this white man, he, in September 22nd, 1931, met Elijah Poole. And Elijah Poole was from Georgia. He and his family came to Detroit in 1925. 
to escape the tyranny and the terror of the Ku Klux Klan and all of those, the Night Riders and all those who were terrorizing our people in the South that made them go North, made them go to the Midwest, made them go to the East, made them go to the West. Those who terrorized our Mexican brothers and sisters and stole their land from them because Mexicans got lynched too. So, he met him on September 22nd, 1931. And from that point, why we call it the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Because Master Fahd Muhammad, during his time among us, raised 25,000. Changed their names. This is 1930. Taught them Islam. Made them dignified. Made them give up smoking and drinking. Didn't make them, they gave it up. Prostitution, gambling, playing the numbers, smoking weed, smoking crack, shooting dope, whatever you name. He made our women into fine, beautiful creatures of God, which they are. He taught us how to eat to live. And he gave his servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, supreme wisdom. Elijah Muhammad only went to the fourth grade. That's as far as he went. I want you to think about that. If you've got a son or a daughter that's in the fourth grade, what level of education did they have? But from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and what Master Fahd Muhammad taught him is how you got Malcolm X. There is no X and there is no Malcolm X without the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's how you got Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. Clay was a slave owner in Kentucky. He was named after a slave owner. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad bestowed the name on him, Muhammad Ali, and made him known all over the world. Taught him such great wisdom that nobody could defeat Muhammad Ali in the debate or when he was talking to some of the greatest journalists and thinkers of that time, Muhammad Ali was handcuffing them and he only had a high school education and failed the military entrance exam. That's why he didn't get drafted at first. Then they changed his draft and drafted him. And once he became a Muslim and once he, he won the heavyweight title, they changed his draft status. And there begins because that's the teaching that Honorable Elijah Muhammad is that we do not believe that we should be forced to fight in wars that take human lives. Unless you give us some of this land that we call our own and make it worth fighting for. Y'all okay? From the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's loins came Imam Wartha D. Muhammad, Wallace D. Muhammad. A deeply spiritual, wise man. But he's from his loins and may not be from his spirit and his heart. But uh, if I had a thousand tongues and a thousand mouths and a thousand lives, I could never thank Allah enough for the man that I met as a 19-year-old college student. Yes, a man that changed the trajectory of my life, though I didn't know that was going to happen. The man I speak of is our brother, our servant, our friend. And I'm going to say something, brothers and sisters, that I don't want you to be shocked. He is the Messiah. In our midst. He is the Jesus in our midst. He's the little Messiah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the big Messiah. And so I want you to just understand that this is going to take three. I actually got to teach this in three parts. Because it's just too much to unpack. We just come back from Chicago from my national headquarters. And once again, happy Savior's Day. <laughs> the Honorable Minister Louis Fogg, I spoke for four and a half hours. So how am I going to summarize it or get it all over to you in an in a hour? No. 
this is going to take about three weeks to unpack what impacted me. And then you're going to have to tell me what impacted you about what he said in the swan song. We okay? He said some things, brothers and sisters, first and foremost, that the swan song wasn't his swan song. The swan song really was our swan song. So, so we have to unpack that. Then he talked about he wasn't going to speak anymore until he returns. Returns from where? Where are you going? He said, I'm going up to yonder. We have to unpack that. Then he said to us that you've been looking for Jesus and he's been hiding in plain sight. So now we got to unpack that as we go towards Easter. <laughs> and then he talked about his domestic life and he talked about the value of the black woman. We have to unpack that. But most importantly, brothers and sisters, this is all preparation for his departure, not death, his departure. And the question is, how strong is our foundation? Can we survive? I'll do this for three weeks, and then in the fourth week, Brother Eric will come before you in preparation for Ramadan. The Ramadan's coming up in April, and we're going to have to prepare you for that, so we'll let our Arabic teacher and our assistant minister, who is capable, competent, qualified to teach it, to come before you and to give you all the nuances and the ins and outs of this great ritual that we have called Ramadan. Okay, brothers and sisters, I, I apologize first and foremost for being a little tardy today. I'm normally not like that, but you know, I had cable man came to my house this morning. And no man should leave his wife alone in the house with some strange man. Only the sisters are clapping. Okay, praise be to all of You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. So I couldn't do that. And, um, but the other thing was I got a very disturbing call this morning. And you know, sisters can bear witness, you know, when you're baking a cake in the oven, don't come stomping in the kitchen. Or when she's cooking bean soup, don't bother her, brother. Cause your bean soup will taste funny. Not that she put something in it, but the spirit of love or anger or frustration will be in the food. I tell anybody in a minute, if my wife is acting funny, I won't eat. I tell her that. What you mean? I said, I'm not eating that. Here. Oh, no. Uh -uh. No. I ain't eating that. There ain't no love in that. He said, well, that, that sounds spooky. That's not spooky. There's a connection between heaven and earth. There's a connection between the spiritual and the material. There's a connection between all of this if we but understood. We okay? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad made Minister Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan is a made man, and I don't mean it in that godfather way. But he's a made man. He's anointed. When you say a Messiah, you're saying that this man is anointed. Not just with oil, but he's anointed with the fire of the Holy Spirit of Allah. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has made Minister Farrakhan a master of conditions. He made him a master of circumstances. And he made him a master of the enemy. Let me make this point and then I'll get to my presentation, if you will. Y'all all right? Let me make this clear. No matter who or what you think, dear brothers and sisters, there's nobody too hard, too militant, too outspoken, too tough for the nation of Islam. You can live this life but it requires that you just don't make motion that you have order in your life. 
You understand? There's structure here. So what happens is, is that people fall out because we're too disciplined. We're too structured. And we run the plays that the coach calls in from the, from the, from the booth. We're responsible to those who are under us, those who work with us, and those who are over us, we're responsible to them. And if you don't want to follow that kind of structure, then you're going to go out and do your own thing and do a little broken field running and dribble between your legs and all that. And you're going to do a little creative stuff, but you find that that kind of team doesn't always win. If you don't learn the fundamentals, you're not necessarily going to win. You can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't know how to utilize that talent, in the proper manner, and sometimes teamwork makes the dream work. Jesus, he and his father were one. Think about it. Here is a man who was the reflection of God. Yet, he said, I of myself can do nothing. So we got to get I, me, and mine out of our conversation and get us, our, and we in there. We okay? Some of you, I hope, I hope you're okay. Okay, so look, our subject for the day, oh my. You cannot live without the truth. Everybody, Minister Farrakhan, said that that swan song was going to hit each and every one of us differently. For me, when he said, I cannot live without the truth, that's what stuck with me. And this is what we'll be talking about today. Y'all okay? Okay, so let's go to the swan song. So many of us anticipated, I did the best I could to disabuse you of fear, hopelessness, and anger in preparation for what we were going to experience. I never thought that this was his swan song. I knew it was something else. And in the final call, you'll find in an article, what I said was, was simply this. I, I can't even quote my own self, but this is my thinking. My thinking is that when, when God makes the minister stop talking. God starts working. In Iowa, there were some tornadoes that took place. War is breaking out and it's spreading. And the foreign minister of Poland said that Putin's aim is not going to stop with Ukraine. And the minister told us that this war was going to keep going. Now the Russians are saying they are part of those six nations that were negotiating with Iran over their nuclear deal. And the foreign minister of Russia said, well, if you don't take these sanctions, if, this, if you're going to sanction our financial and economic <laughs> ties with Iran, then this deal is off. So now they say that Iran is a few months away from making, having enough nuclear material to make a bomb. And they're a little ways away from the technology to take that and make it into a bomb. Do you think that Israel is going to allow them to do that? Do you think the CIA is going to allow them to do that? Do you think the MI5 of, of Britain's uh, foreign intelligence, James Bond, you know, license to kill is going to let them do that? So what is that going to do? And if they do get a bomb, do you think that the Arab nations, the Sunni nations are not going to try to buy a bomb from Pakistan? I just want to put that on your cap for a minute. Y'all okay? So a swan song is a farewell appearance, a final act pronouncement, the last performance of piece of work by an actor, athlete, or writer. Well, brothers and sisters, look, let me get right to the point why we celebrate a Savior's Day. Because of our misunderstanding of who and what God is. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that for thousands of years, people who 
<clears throat> did not have the knowledge of, of the person and reality of God, worship their own ideas of God, and that he's been made like many things other than what he really is. So we believe, brothers and sisters, point number 12 of, the, of what, the Muslim want, what the Muslim want, what the Muslim believe, we believe that Allah God appeared in the person of Master Father Muhammad, July 1930. The long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Makdi of the Muslims, we believe, believe further and lastly that Allah is God, beside them there is no God, and he will bring about a universal government of peace where we can all live in peace together. Universal government of peace. We're okay. Okay. So, Master Father Muhammad, again, as I said, came and taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad night and day for three and one half years, stood him up, leaving him as evidence that God had came and disturbed the strong man's house. America had never been the same since the coming of God. Master Father Muhammad taught us that the slave masters had taught us to eat the wrong food and that wrong food is the cause of our sickness and short span of life. He declared that he would heal us and set us in heaven at once if we would submit to him. Otherwise, he would chastise us with a severe chastisement until we did submit. And that he was able to force the whole world into submission to his will. He said that he loved us, the so-called Negroes, his lost and found so well that he would eat rattlesnakes to free us if necessary, for he has the power over all things. From Master Farah Muhammad's coming, you see these three great ones. You see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who's an extension of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. When you see him, you see Elijah. Because Elijah is in him and he is in Elijah. He's a man that loved the man so much he gave up everything that he was to help that man. He gave his life to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and for that and for him staying in the class. He is now the master of condition, the master of circumstances, and the master of the enemy. Now, brothers and sisters, let's get down to brass tacks here. In the Nation of Islam, brothers and sisters, we don't believe in happenstance or coincidence. Y'all okay? There's a verse in the Holy Quran that tells us, it says, when an unrighteous man brings you news, look carefully into it, lest you harm a people in ignorance and be sorry for what you did. So we're always looking for actual facts. We don't move out on slander, gossip, slack talk, and rumors. We must have actual facts. So Master Fahd Muhammad hardwired us to look at things according to actual facts. Let's go to our actual facts. In Habakkuk, the third chapter, the sixth verse, it says, he, meaning that great mighty one, measured the earth. So Master Fahd Muhammad gave us actual facts about the islands, the deserts, Mount Everest, all of those things. Y'all okay? All right. Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, good. Oh, there you go. There we are. He gave us our actual facts. We go to the next one. The area of the land and the area of the water, the area of the earth, the circumference, the diameter, the water, the, the oceans, the deserts, the hills, the mountains. He gave us all of that. He gave us the speed of light, how far the earth was from the sun. He gave us how fast the earth turns on its, on its axis, 1,037 third miles per hour. The speed of light being 186,000 miles per second. The speed of sound being 1,120 feet per second. And he gave us even the diameter of the sun. Think over that. Y'all all right? And so, brothers and sisters, so we, you know, we can't be you know, sometimes you say, they're Muslims, man. They always like, you know, defining words and doing all you know, like that. They seem kind of robotic. Nah, it's not we robotic, man. We just ain't all emotional. Just you say something and we. No. 
You say, y'all like Mr. Spock from Star Trek. No, we're not. <laughs> but if it don't make sense, it don't make sense. We okay. Why is it, brothers and sisters? As the minister said, I cannot live without truth. And I'm saying to us, we cannot live without truth. You cannot live without truth. I cannot live without truth. Not just truth, the truth. Not alternative facts, but actual facts. We okay? So this is what the Holy Quran said, and I'll tie it to the minister and, and we'll go from there. In the Holy Quran, in the 29th surah, the 44th verse, it says, Allah created the heavens and earth with truth. Surely there's a sign in this for the believers. A sign is not the real thing. A sign leads you to the real thing. But Allah created the heavens and the earth with truth. So truth has to be the basis of everything that we're seeking out. We okay? The minister said the truth is light, is our life itself. And I'll prove it to you in no limited time if you just give me a moment. So let's talk about the first law of the universe and the second law of the universe. Now, Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the first law of the universe is motion. Everything that is living is moving. We live in a universe where everything is in motion. Nothing is really standing still. And when you have motion, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us the second law of the universe is that you must have order. Disorder is the very opposite of order, for order presupposes obedience to law, rules, and regulations. Once you have motion and no order, then the motion starts tearing itself apart. Without order, then you bring your motion to a stop. Disorder produces death of a society, death of a nation, and death of a civilization, and it produces your and my death if our life is not ordered. Y'all with me? So let's define order, disorder, and motion. Order is a condition of logical or comprehensive, comprehensible arrangement among the separate elements of a group and the establishment, the established order of social organization a condition in which freedom from disorder or disruption is maintained through respect for established authority. Disorder is a lack of order or regular arrangement, confusion, a breach of civil order or peace, a public disturbance, an ailment that affects the function of the mind and body. Keep that in mind, y'all all right? Motion, the act or process of changing position or place a meaningful or expressive change in position of the body or part of the body, a gesture, active operation, as in set the plan in motion, the ability or power to move, the manner in which the body moves, as in walking, listen to this one, a prompting from within an impulse or inclination. Keep that one in mind. Y'all all right. All right, hang with me, brothers and sisters. We'll be out of here by tomorrow. Let's talk about Almighty God, Allah, and creating life. Mr. Farrakhan teaches us in the restrictive law of Islam that Almighty God, Allah, and creating life and giving motion to life in all the planets would be an unwise God to create the motion, which is a law, and not protect that motion by bringing the law that gives order to that motion. That's a wise God. In everything that exists, you find a law working. And in everything that exists, you find that the success of that creature is directly due to its obedience to the law under which it is created. Once the creature, listen to this. Once the creature deviates from the law under which it is created, it starts interfering with its own motion. Then it brings itself to an untimely death. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so let's look at human beings. 
Minister Farrakhan says, well, let us look at human beings for a moment. You may not realize this, but we are created as what is called a microcosm. That whatever you see going on in us, you can read it in the universe for the same God that created us created the universe. Remember, Allah created the heavens and the earth in truth. So that means that we're created in truth. Is that right? Okay, so just hang, hang with the brother. Because I cannot live without the truth. And you can't either. So now let's look at the let's look at the brain. This brain of ours, Mr. Farrakhan says, is, is, is to be like the sun. It is to be lit with knowledge. And by this brain being lit with knowledge, then the systems obey the law of the light of our knowledge, and we have harmony and order in the function of our bodies. But at the very moment our light goes out in the 10th system, our brain, the moment you do not have the kind of knowledge that will allow you to live by divine law of almighty God, then because of the darkness of our thoughts and the darkness of our minds, we begin to interfere with the harmonious function of our systems. Listen. Listen. All right. Let's look at the creation of the heavens and the earth. We being a microcosm, the solar system being a macrocosm. We okay? Yes, sir. Now look, brothers and sisters, you do not come to the mosque to be entertained. Yes. If you leave here the same way you came here, we did not do our job. Yes. If we don't teach you something that you didn't think about, you didn't know, or at least touch on something that you know and just took it just a little bit deeper, a little bit wider, a little bit further, then we didn't do our job. There are nine minutes of our country. There are nine planets out here revolving around the sun. These nine planets are mastered and controlled by the light of the sun, which keeps the planets in orbit and in order. Did you know Mercury being 36 million miles away from the sun, Venus being 67 million miles away from the sun, Earth being 93 million miles away from the sun, Mars being 141 million miles away from the sun, Pluto being 4 billion 600 million miles away from the sun, each of them spin at 1,037 and third miles per hour because of the light of the sun? Did you know that? That's deep, man. That's deep. So Minister Farrakhan says the same thing applies to you and me. Within the human being are nine functioning systems. The skeletal, digestive, lymphatic, muscle, muscle, respiratory, endocrine, nervous, circulatory system, and reproductive. And the tenth system is the brain. Did you know that the health of the human body depends on how well these ten systems function in relationship to each other? Anytime you get sick, listen, anytime you get sick, there's a disorder in the systems of your own body. Now, we know that we were taught by a master teacher. We know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was taught by a savior because he gave him knowledge in 1930s that right now we're just discovering makes sense. You heard of intermittent, intermittent fasting? This is the new, the new thing. Intermittent, intermittent, well, you've got to intermittent fasting. Man, that's called how to eat to live. We already knew this. Eat one meal a day, one meal every other day, fast three days out the month, in a minute fasting. That's the new, it's the new type thing. <coughs> but we got a problem. And if we solve these problems, then we get the reward or the prize. Stick with me, brothers and sisters. Just hang with me. Master Father Muhammad gave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad a problem book with 34 problems. They're mathematical problems. They're, they're our spiritual condition put in a mathematical language, word problems. I know you didn't like word problems in math class. I won't know. Let me say that. Some of us didn't like 
word problems in math class. Some of us skipped math class. Some of us was high in math class. Some of us was in the back of the room throwing spitballs in math class. Some of y'all laughing behind the mask. I see it, don't, don't. Some of us paid attention in math class. But one of the first problem, listen, listen to this. The uncle of Mr. W.D. Farad lived in the wilderness of North America and he lived other than his own self. Therefore, his pulse beat 78 times per minute and this killed him at 45 years of age. How many times did his pulse beat in 45 years? How many minutes in a day? Multiplied by pulse beats per minute. Days in a year, multiplied by 45 years. This is what is gonna give you and I the answer. But you can figure out that problem and come out with a huge number and you would have wasted your time. Because the key in all of that is he lived other than his own self. And I'll show it to you in just a moment. Now, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, let's go to Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Minister Farrakhan says, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the human body is a mathematical creation. And like everything else, it's on time. So when the light goes out up there, you'll find you don't function well. You begin to have problems with your heart. You begin to have problems with your rhythm of your system. For example, when your pulse beat is off, that means your heartbeat is off. And when the doctor listens to your pulse, he is listening for the regularity of the beat of your pulse, which tells us whether you are mathematically tuned up, right? Let's talk about vital signs. When you go to the doctor, he takes your vital signs. Y'all, y'all ain't falling asleep on me, are you? It's all right. Remember, Allah created the heavens and the earth with truth. Surely this is a sign in this for the believers. And problem number 13, it says after learning mathematics, which is Islam and Islam is mathematics, it stands true. You can always prove it at no limit of time. So when we look at our vital signs, right? You look at your heart, your heart rate beats per minute. If it's below, then if it's below, then, then you, uh, you got a Brody card, uh, cardia. If it's below 60 beats per minute, if it's above 100 beats per minute, you have a tachycardia. cardia. Is that, where's my doctor's at? Is it? Tachy, tachycardia, thank you. My nurse, my nurse over here. Thank you, nurse Iris. Praise be to Allah. I don't care how many degrees I have. I'm a student. And like my teacher, I can learn from anybody. Because I'm looking for God in everybody. I'm looking, I'm see God out here. I'm talking to God. That's why I'm not talking to you crazy. All right. So, but the, the, the uncle W.D. Farad, if you think about it, his heartbeat or the pulse was Six, was 70, what was it, 78 times per minute. So if you really look at it, was he above or below normal? No, he's right in between. But why did they kill him in 45 years? Because he was living other than himself. So they look at your they look at your uh, your heartbeat. They look at your blood pressure. They look at your your breath per minute. They look at your oxygen level, and they look at your temperature. Right? These are the mathematical numbers the doctor looks at to know whether you and I are functioning properly. So it ain't just he just some kind of witch doctor or something like that or some kind of magician or sorcerer. He looking at actual facts to determine your and my uh, diagnosis and then our prognosis of how long we gonna live. Y'all okay? All right. So now, Mr. Farrakhan goes on to talk about looking for problems. He said, consequently, you also start looking for problems in the circulatory system. 
And that problem in the circulatory system may be also indicative that there's a problem in the nervous system. And when the circulatory system and the nervous system are set, there's a problem in the digestive system. And if you keep going, if you keep it going, then there will be a problem in the muscular system and in the skeletal system. And before you know it, we'll just start, we'll start just breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. And the motion of life starts beginning to come to a halt because of the dysfunction, disharmony, disorder in the body because something is not functioning according to the law under which it is created. I, you, and we cannot live without the truth. Now, in the nation of Islam, brothers and sisters, again, we deal with the law of cause and effect. The Holy Quran says in the creation of the heaven and the earth and the alternation of the night and day, they are signs for men of understanding. So there's a connection between your, your and my brain and our body, between heaven and earth. Right? And we say, ooh, my knee hurts. It's, it's fitting the rain. Are you serious? <laughs> it's fitting the rain. My knee hurts. It's fitting the rain. Yeah, that might be true. But what is the law of cause and effect? See? How, what makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes? The son of man. But the son of man's thoughts shapes matter. And that matter acts in a certain way. So there's a law when it comes to evaporation. It's pulled up by the gravity of the sun and the moon. It's pulled up. It can't get past six miles in the atmosphere. So it collects in clouds and depending on the current of air that is going in, it'll distill back in the earth in the form of rain, hail, or snow. Y'all all right? So understand, brothers and sisters, that there's a law of cause and effect. And how we feel when we're happy, how we feel when we're sad, how we feel when we're angry, how we feel when we're fearful affects our body. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Once again, Allah created the heavens and the earth with truth. Surely there's a sign in this for the believers. Again, that's the macrocosm. But think about the microcosm. Think about your brain, your thinking, my thinking, our thinking as the sun. And think about the nine systems in your body as the planets. They're all different, but they all work together to bring about a harmonious relationship and there's no disorder because if there was disorder, then there is death. We okay? But the question is, why do we believe such spookism? Why is there a disconnect between our concept of God and ourselves? What is it that prevents you and I from even believing that God would love you so much he would come himself? He ain't said nobody. Our statement and our declaration and what we stand on is that God loved you and I so much he came himself. Now, what blocks you and I from even believing that? Because of lies. What's the opposite of the truth? It's falsehood. It's a lie. If we've been taught wrong, if we're being treated wrong, what makes you think a man's going to teach you right? If they won't treat you right, what makes you think they're going to teach you right? What are they teaching our babies in these schools? Now they don't want critical race theory. We never talk critical race theory. What they're saying is we don't want to teach you the history of our bloodshedding, stealing the land from the Indians and the Mexicans and everybody else and stealing your labor for you. We don't want to talk about that. Because it might make little Johnny, little Mary feel bad. So our lessons ask the question, let's go to our lessons. 
Why does the devil teach the 85% that a mystery God brings all of this? Brings rain, hail, snow, it's a mystery God. See, man, ooh, man, ooh, it's raining and the sun's out. The devil must be beating his wife. A grown man, a grown woman talking like that. That's nuts. <laughs> but why, why does he teach us like that? To conceal the true God, which is the son of man, and to make slaves out of 85%. By keeping and worshiping something he knows that he cannot see invisible. And he lives and makes himself rich from their labor. See, if he ever taught you what he knew or the reality of God, he knows the reality of God. If he ever taught you and I the reality of God, then we would be equal to him or greater than him because anything the black man and woman gets a hold of. Look at us in sport and play. You keep us out of basketball, we get in basketball, we take it over. Huh? You kept us out of tennis, we got in tennis, we took it over. Right? Venus and Serena, right, took them, took them to the hole, right? They ain't never seen nothing like them. Y'all okay? Come on, pay attention now. Pay attention. Don't get distracted. Tiger took him, Tiger took him to the woods, didn't he? He was a little confused, but we know what he is, man, because black don't crack. They kept us out of baseball. We took that over. Boxing took that over. Whatever it is that we put our minds to, the original people of the earth take it over. Hidden figures. You didn't know that them sisters got John Glenn back here safely? You didn't know that that sister gave the calculations to bring a man to the moon and back safely? Why do we know that? Because they're hidden figures. They don't want you to know what you and I are capable of, who we are and whose we are. Who is the original man? If we are the original people of the earth, we're the first people from God. We're made after his image and in his likeness. In fact, our DNA is him. In all of us is a piece of God. But Mr. Parker said that's the beginning of being a jackass. Because you have this power and then you start acting like a jackass. Till somebody puts you in check. Then you say, oh, Okay. But he does that so he can continue to use us as tools and slaves. The 85% know it rains, hails, and snow. Also hear thunder above his head. But they do not try to learn who it is that causes all of this to happen by letting the 5% teach them. He believes in the 10% on face value. Isn't it strange, brothers and sisters, that if all of a sudden the white man held a press conference tomorrow and, and Jan Psaki, the press, uh, the, the press secretary of President Biden and the, and the ministry came out and says, we have determined according to our administrative executive policy that Minister Louis Farrakhan is indeed a good man. He's not an anti-Semite. He's not a bigot. He's not misogynist. He's not homophobic. He really is a, a real Muslim, and the Nation of Islam is doing a great job of reforming our people, thereby saving us tax dollars because they're getting them off of welfare, they're getting them off of drugs, they're getting them out of jail, they're building families, they're building marriage, they're doing all the things. That's exactly what you'd be doing. Ooh, man, I, man we'd be teaching Islam in shifts. We'd have you come sit down, Repeat after me, there's no God but Allah, Muhammad is messenger. You say that, then we say, next. <laughs> Fill up the seats again. But you, because the white man's ice is colder. But in that movie, City Hall, I think the Al Pacino character said, you, you know a man not by his friends, but by his enemies. Who doesn't like Farrakhan? You can't even say his name in certain company. You saw, if you watched it, please go home and watch it. You saw cash money in them give ten dollars to $20,000 to the minister? Huh? We saw two chains. Huh? He, he, he pawned on one of his chains and he gave $10,000. Is that right? 
You've seen these brothers and sisters giving this money, but believe me, I'm sure they got a call from somebody. They say, you, you, do, you love Farrakhan, but you, you can't come near him. Look what happened to Nick Cannon. I know I was there in the garden with Nick Cannon. I know what he said to the minister, what the minister said to him. I was right, you call it ear hustling, Brother Jesse. I was, I was, ear, I was ear hustling. I was right there. I was closer than you are to me. But look at what they did to him. Look what they did to that brother. What, Stansfield Keith is his name? He was on, just, just on that chat. What is that chat thing? What's that called? Nephew, what is that called? The, the, huh? What's it called? Not Snapchat. Clubhouse. He was on Clubhouse. Thank you, nephew. He was on Clubhouse. He wasn't really participating. I was listening. He wasn't really participating. He was kind of, he wasn't even really moderating. He just happened to be on it. Lord have mercy. They jumped all over the poor man. Next thing I know, I'm looking on the internet. He's sitting there with fish, net, black panty hose. I mean, I'm, come on, brother. Yeah. How come they always effeminizing our men? They put them in dresses and whatnot. Dave Chappelle wouldn't go for it. I ain't never seen Denzel in the evening. Denzel said, I ain't putting on no dress. Why is it that they try to effeminize us, sister? What is that? Okay. Y'all, y'all okay? <laughs> what I want you to think about before you leave here is, who are you for real? If you and I cannot live without truth and we were created in truth, just like the heavens and the earth, and we lean on that truth, we take in that truth, we live by that truth, then who are we? Mr. Farrakhan says this. Listen to this. This is what he said in the swan song. He said, the love of God is the key to the manifestation of who you are. If you love your creator, then you and I will prosper as his creation. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so now, I want to remind you what Mr. Farrakhan said. With the whole theme of what I'm trying to get across to you today, brothers and sisters. He said, I want you to hold on to those words. I cannot live without the truth. This all goes to him giving up everything that he was born to do. The, the man is a multi-talented genius. When he was a young boy, man, he was a master violinist. He was a calypso singer. He was a performer. He was all of that. They used to wrap lines around the, 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 the street to come see him play in the clubs. He could have been, look, they offered him 500, I'm talking in the 1950s, man. You get your phone out and tell me with an uh, inflation cal uh, calculator how much that is. If they offered Mr. Farrakhan in 1956, 55, 56, $500 a week, how much is that in 2022 dollars? If somebody get out their phone and you yell it out and tell me. You don't have to do it right now. Just, I mean, do it right now, but as I'm going to continue with the lesson, but I want you to tell me how much that's worth, and he gave it up. For the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, your greatest gift is in the spiritual. He gave it up and got it all back again. Have you seen his Beethoven concerto? Yes, we picked up the violin after having put it down all them years and played Beethoven without notes in front of him. The whole orchestra that's behind him, they got music and they turn in pages and all that kind of stuff but Farrakhan's up there playing his part of the violin without any notes whatsoever you know who that man is talk to me what what come on talk to me nephew five thousand dollars a week time times what 52 weeks my brother how much is that that's like what 200 and what thousand dollars come on with the mathematics because mathematics is islam and islam is mathematics think about that he gave up five thousand dollars a week in 2022 dollars 
And then for nine years, him and his family ate bean soup every night. They went to the, the, the equivalent, maybe you call Whole Foods, right? And waited for the people to throw out the vegetables. And they were going and they'd get a shopping bag and they put stuff in the bag and wash it and carry it off secretly to them to feed their family. He didn't have nothing. They still tried to firebomb his house. You talk about Malcolm's house getting firebombed. They tried to kill Minister Farrakhan and his family. He threw a firebomb at the front door and the back door. He didn't have nothing. Think about that. Minister Farrakhan says like this, brothers and sisters, the opposite of truth is lies, right? He says this, you cannot live with a bunch of lies that you tell or you're telling or listening to. Paul says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Mr. Park, I said, what is right? So that's how we got to be. We can't be moving off some rumor, some innuendo, some I don't know, some don't tell nobody. Don't fall for that. Deal with actual facts. Do not live your life as a lie. Live it according to the truth. Because you and I cannot live without the truth. We okay? Yes, sir. So the Holy Quran says in 2118, nay, we hurl truth against falsehood, so we knock out his brains, and lo, it vanishes. And woe to you for what? You describe. Wow, I didn't know falsehood had brains. No, falsehood ain't got brains. It resides in brains. So you have to knock out these lies that you and I have been taught. So now do we teach you that you are God? I didn't just say you're just a Muslim by nature. You're God. What does that do when you've been taught you are N-word? You ain't nothing. You ain't never been nothing. You look like your you look like your nappy headed daddy. Your mama was no good. The old alcoholic so and so. Look, your mama no good. She 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 left you on the curb. She sent you to school with the same jeans on every day. Your hair all nasty and whatnot. You wasn't this. You wasn't that. You come from a poor family. You stupid. You dumb. You just and then a man stands up to you and tells you in the name of the honorable Elijah Muhammad Allah and his Messiah, the honorable Louis Farrakhan, that you are God. That's shocking. But the truth of the matter is, is anything that you can conceive and believe you can achieve. Who told you no? Who told you can't? And the person that told you no and told you can't crippled you for life. Because every time you get close to that success, even you try to attempt the impossible, you stop. You stop because that voice in your head that you've been programmed is telling you, you can't. No, you ain't nothing. You never be nothing. And then you and I know looking in the mirror that we're sinful, we've fallen short of the glory of God, but that's not our nature. We're not devils by nature, we're devils by circumstance. We're living other than self by circumstance. Yes, sir. You okay? Yes, sir. All right, okay. So now, if you want to be free, then look at what Jesus argues in the eighth chapter of John. Come on, man. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In the beginning was the word. That word became flesh. So the thoughts that you're thinking can be made manifest in the reality of the world. You may have started off riding a bicycle in your neighborhood or walking to catch Metro. And then we see you some years later, you driving a Maybach. How did 
did that come about? Because you took the skill and talent that God gave you and you didn't listen to the haters. You didn't listen to the naysayers. You didn't listen to anybody that told you no or can't. You conceived it, you believed it, you went to work, and you achieved it. That's how you prove your God. That's the practical application of proving your God. Try something this week that you think is impossible. Give it a shot, man. Even if you fall short, come on up and push and push and push and push till you build up that muscle, that spiritual muscle. Stop accepting mediocrity. I'm almost done. Give me, give me just a. Y'all okay? I only got two, two more, two more. You need truth to set you free. Not emotionalism, though we have emotions. Sometimes the emotion is what you need to push you. Once you know the truth, now you need a kind of emotion that will move you. But it gotta be, you gotta be a guided missile. Can't be no unguided missile, be a guided missile. Oh Lord have mercy. <coughs> so look. If the love of God is what manifests your gifts, manifests who you are, right? Let's look at the demonstration of love of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mr. Farrakhan says, I know the demonstration of love from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I've tried to do the same in my work. And I tried, he's done it. So can you look beyond the faults and see the needs of your people? Or are you going to be one who's always condemning our people, calling them the N-word? That word should be stricken from our vocabulary because Master Fahd Muhammad never called us that. He said that we are the original people, the first in the light of the sun. We are the people of God. If you believe that, then treat our people like you believe that they are more than what they show. Because what they show is a manifestation of their ignorance. If you treat them with an evil attitude, you will demonstrate that you have never been raised from a dead level. Do you love our people? Yes, sir. Do you love our people? Yes, sir. What are you willing to do to prove that love? Yes. See, that's what the minister was saying when he said to you and I and to the world, I cannot live without truth. When he was told, that the Honorable Elijah Mama said, give up, get out of show business or get out of the temple within 30 days. Minister Farrakhan walked 30 steps, he said, and said, huh, I can live without music, but I cannot live without the truth. How about you and me? We heard the truth. We know it's the truth. I gave you mathematics, I gave you science, I gave you scripture, I gave you history. You know that what I'm telling you is the truth. The question is, will you walk 30 steps and say what you're willing to give up for the truth? Mr. Farquhar stayed in the class of God and now he's manifesting himself like a God. And you say, ooh, y'all worship Farquhar? I don't worship him. He taught us to worship no God but Allah. I don't worship the minister. Don't mistake it. I love for the minister for worship. In everything Minister Farquhar ever did was to show us what was in us. If he said he can learn from anybody, then he makes me to do the same if I'm his disciple. So if you're a follower of Jesus, then you as a disciple should do what Jesus did. You can't be a disciple if you can't open the eyes of the blind. I ain't talking about, you can go to an ophthalmologist and get your eye, get laser surgery. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about what you didn't know. Now your eyes come over to, whoa. I'm talking about you looking in the mirror and finding out that you really are God. Then make the deaf hear. 
You know you came in here, some of you say, I ain't, I ain't hearing nothing. I'm just coming here because someone's going to bite me. I ain't trying to hear that. Now all of a sudden you hear. And as that truth comes, the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now all of a sudden, whoa, wait a minute. Got some God thing going on up in here. Mute to speak. All you got to do is take like I'm doing just a quote of the minister. Put it in a song. Go to school tomorrow. And somebody trying to run it down. You say, you know my brother? Hit him like that. You know my brother, my sister? What I learned was Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam. Man, where you get that from? Man, you know what, man? I'm giving up weed. Look, what's wrong with you? Look, look what's wrong with you? Ain't no what's wrong. What's right with you? I want to take care of me. My nine systems are being affected. No, I got problems. I got 99 problems. No, 100 problems. The 100 problem is myself and my thinking. So now I got to, man, I got to calm down. Man, I got all these problems. Let me, let me hit this button. Let me hit this button. Woo, I feel good temporarily. Come right back and the reality smacking you right in the face. Do you love our people? You can't love our people if you don't love yourself. Because your brother is your other. Your sister is your other. If you don't see yourself in your sister and in your brother, then you, you, you can't love our people. You have to be looking for God in all the right places. And if you go to the wrong place, you'll find him there too. And he'll send you right back to the right place. If your life is spared. The Savior comes to give you and I life and life more abundantly. The teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad are called the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mr. Farrakhan comes as confirmation of that life-giving teaching and the life that we have more abundantly. You ain't made a man, met a man 88 years old that could teach for four and a half hours like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He could have went on for another four and a half hours. What better man is this? Oh, oh, but Farrakhan was sitting on the seat. Well, if you had a sculptory surgery, a 14-hour surgery, and they took out all your internal organs, and you could still walk, you'd be a walking miracle. Farrakhan's a walking miracle. They tried to murder the man. Nobody more hated than Minister Farrakhan, nobody more loved by God. If the enemy hates him, I love him. I love him anyway. If the enemy all comes around, you know, eventually Pharaoh in the Holy Quran, Pharaoh in the Holy Quran, he bore witness that there's no God but love. That's his last before he drowned. He bore witness there was no God but Allah, no God but Allah before he drowned. Well, this same thing will happen with this, this enemy. Do you love our people? What are you willing to do to prove that love? Hmm. God is love. And the love that God is, is the love that God did and showed. Can I say that again? God is love. And the love that God is, is the love that God did and showed. Let me end with the book of James, the second chapter, the 17th and the 18th verse. Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead. Being alone, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. In Islam, the Holy Quran says, oh, you believe, keep your duty to Allah as it ought to be kept. Islam is faith carried into practice. It's not what you say. Love for us is not what you say. Love is what you do. So the question is now, 
what are you I going to do to demonstrate our love for ourselves by getting ourselves together? Getting ourselves together and getting our people together. It all starts with you and I. The love of one man, the faith of one man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan rebuilt a nation of Islam. We wouldn't even be sitting in here if it weren't for that man's love for his teacher. Think about it. He made black popular again. You say you woke? Mr. Farrakhan is the alarm clock that woke you up. You just don't know it. Who comes out of a dead sleep and knows that they've been woke? Oh, you be going for the alarm clock. You don't even know the alarm clock. Some of us don't like the alarm clock. That's why they don't like Farrakhan, because he woke them up. We were happy being asleep. There's an old saying that ignorance is bliss. Being ignorant is being happy. Well, you can't be happy anymore unless you're doing the will of God. My brothers, my sisters, all I can tell you is Come back next week. Same black time, same black channel. For you cannot live without the truth. Part two. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Cannot live without water either. <laughs> how many of you? How many of you are visiting with us for the first time today? All oh, praises due to Ray J. Now stand up for me. Can you stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Contrary to historical era and popular belief. There is no compulsion in religion. Nobody can force you to believe what you don't believe. But whether it's your first time or your 100th time, how many of you believe what you heard today to be true and good for God's people? Raise your hand. Praise be to Allah. All right. If you believe what you heard today to be true and good for God's people, whether it's your first or your 1,000th time, how many of you today would like to become students of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, unite with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and begin studying these teachings with us here at Mosque 45? If you would, raise your, raise your beautiful black hand. All praise be to Allah. So, this is Brother Don. This is Brother Don. Come, come on over here and see Brother Don. If it would, once we get past this COVID-19 piece, come on, y'all, come on. If you want to be a student, come on. Be a student like me, come on and get with Brother Don. Come on. What? A long way, bro. Law whack ball. Law whack ball. Law whack ball. My sisters, you go with Sister Faye. That's Sister Faye, right? These masks be messing the brother up. Sister Faye, you go with Sister Faye. She'll tell you what you have to do for me on. If this wasn't COVID-19 out down there, I would shake your hand and all of that. But you know, we, we're chilling right now. We're doing fist bumps and all of the elbows. <laughs> we're doing the elbow and all of that right now. But whatever we're doing, we welcome you to Mars 45, welcome you to these teachings, and be a student with the rest of us. May Allah bless you. All praises be to Allah. Go with Sister Fair. Okay, so we're going to have you out of here in about 12 minutes, brothers and sisters, for real. Um, I want you to know how much I appreciate each and every one of you. I want you to make sure that you support the efforts of Mars 45, as we are now supercharged by the minister, having heard the swan song collectively, we know we've got a lot of work to do in the city. So let me put it like this. We will become a lot more visible. I don't like, I don't like doing media. I really don't but you will begin starting to see me again at these different press conferences and different things. 
Because the truth of the matter is, brother and sister, is, is that out of sight, out of mind. So this Tuesday, we'll be, we'll be doing the, the Donnie Houston podcast. And um, I learned a lot from that brother on that Donnie Houston podcast about them streets and all the people that's in the streets and all that kind of, I learned a lot. I like that podcast, but he wants me to come on this Tuesday. So I'll be filming that. And so you'll start seeing that on the internet. Inshallah, we'll be traveling back and forth and doing some things now that we've got to do. And let me put it like this, brothers and sisters. We want to invite you to come and be with us because we're not going to act on other people's stages. We're going to set our own stage. So at Mosque 45, Mosque 45 is more than a place to come and hear religious lectures. There got to be workshops and seminars here, health fairs and job fairs here. Y'all all right? They have to organize our people. We have to organize our people. That is our job is to serve our people. So get ready and get ready to work. This ain't no, you know, where well, you're a Sunni Muslim, you know, Sunday Muslim. That means that we're going to be 24, 7, 365 in one quarter. We got work to do. We got a people to free. And by freeing them, we'll free ourselves. So I'm going to take leave of you today, put on my mask, turn it over to the capable, competent, and qualified brother Eric Muhammad, and we'll bring forth our charity receptacles, brothers and sisters, please. Help us to uh, pay the bills that we have around here. They say the best things in life are free, but <laughs> center point ain't giving away nothing but hard times and bubble gum today. May Allah bless you, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you, sir. Let's give our student region minister another round of applause. Praise be to Allah. All right, when that, when that, when that bucket come around, stop clapping, put some in it. All right. But no, brothers and sisters, this portion of our meeting is just as important of what you just heard, because charity is a pillar of Islam. And each Muslim or each believer, regardless of your faith expression, is required to give. Our bill money is not our charity money. Allah says, spend out of what I have given you. He ain't say spend all of what I've given you. He says, spend out of what I have given you. And we take on what the Bible calls a tenth, meaning that they call it a tithe, but we say a tenth, meaning that however you get paid, we should take 10% away from that and give. I, I ain't hear no, it's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whenever you see charity and prayer together throughout the Quran, and one of the companions of the prophet Abu Bakr said, I will fight anyone who separates prayer from charity. Charity is the physical expression of your prayers. Charity says that I believe in this and I'm committing to what I believe in. Because a man and woman who parts with their hard earnings shows that they have faith in what it is they say they believe in. This is how important charity is. And we shouldn't sleep on charity when it's time to give. We should always strive to be the number one givers. Because when you show that you are the number one giver, then you are expressing that you have great faith. So let us give, brothers and sisters. We are at 78% on our Savior's Day gift to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. On Tuesday night, on the 15th, we will have a Savior's Day rally. And our goal is $307,000 to give to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We don't care what nobody thinks about giving to that man. Because that man gave each and every one of us life. And we should want to be turned, well, now we should not want to be turned upside down and shaking out our pockets. That means we're, we're not willing to give. But on Tuesday the 15th, we're going to have a Savior's Day rally and we're going to complete this goal. And then once we complete this goal, we still got work in our beautiful mosque. Isn't this mosque beautiful? It's going to cost money. I remember when. Not, not that I was there, 
when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was listening to a lecture by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he was teaching on helping the messenger of Allah. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, see, he loves me. He's teaching the people to help. So it's our job, brothers and sisters, to help. If we want ease in our life, let's help. Let's give. So once we complete our Savior's Day gift, then let's start giving to the mosque. But on our charity receipt, it has local, it has local building fund. And as Muslims, we can as believe it, we can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time, right? So that means we should be able to give at the same time to all the various charities to help us to grow and evolve. All right, brothers and sisters? So praise be to Allah. So next, thank you for your giving. Give yourself a round of applause for giving. But I just want to take a minute because we cannot sleep on the power of charity. If giving, yes, physically being here is important, but also parting from your hard earned money is, is as equally as important as, as well. But you got to be here to give it, right? So praise be to Allah. All right. So, so with that being said, the final call newspaper. How many of y'all got this final call newspaper, this edition? Oh, that is. Oh, you got the digital, right? But the, the paper is not outdated either. It, it literally still exists, right? <laughs> I know we're advancing in time, right? But you got to put this physical copy in your hand and read through it. So before you leave the day, even though you have a digital copy of the Final Call, get you a physical copy as well of the Mighty Final Call newspaper. And when you see the brothers on the corner pushing, and I'm one of those brothers. I love being out there among the people, right? Getting the final call newspaper, it's important. So let us, let us purchase our paper, brothers and sisters, because media is important. Media is important. Also, we got the finalcallradio.com. Uh, Go on to download the app, listen to the final call radio of the various lectures by the Honorable Minister Lewis. Farcon, very, very powerful and very exciting. Next slide, please. Right, store.finalcall.com. Everything that you heard, the honorable, um, our student regional minister, Brother Abdul Halim, come from today, go and order your books. Because Muslims, we're taught that we're going to be tested over the three and one half years of history. So we got to purchase our books and we got to study, 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 study. All right, so praise be to Allah. Next slide. And before you leave today, but Nate, you got some bean pies? Sure. All right. Where Brother Ray at with his bean pies? All right. Brother Ray got his bean pies. Before you leave today, get your local bean pie. And if you like that Chicago Supreme bean, you can go online and they will ship it directly to your house. All right. Next slide. Yes. There we go again. Get your books. Hey, that's an important slide, man. Y'all want me to teach on it? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Pick up. Uh, Y'all don't know about that. Some of y'all too young know about that. All right, so my 45 meeting time, Sunday, 10 a.m., you know, is packed now. But it should be packed at 945. A day going to come when we show up late, we won't be able to come in. <laughs> that day is coming soon. Our people are waking up. So get here on time, brothers and sisters, and let's pray together as we're closing out prayer together. On Wednesday nights, we have Supreme Wisdom Wednesday, where we're going over the first 30 pages of Message to the Black Man, the reality of God. You don't want to miss it. Who is God? We in the Nation of Islam do not believe in a mystery God. When we say Allah, we're not talking about a spook. We understand that concept and that reality. Come on on Wednesday night and learn it as well. On Friday night as well, Self-Improvement Study Group, where we're learning and going over the study of self. Who are you? Rather ask you, who are you? What would you tell me? Come to Friday night study group. Let's learn all about ourselves. So that's it. So let us stand for prayer, brothers and sisters, and may Allah bless you all. Thank you. Prayer. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. 
All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world, the beneficent, the merciful, master of their judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path you bestowed your favors upon, and not the path you brought your wrath down upon, nor those who gone astray after hearing thy teachings. We humbly submit this prayer in the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the living and exalted Christ, the big Messiah. And we humbly submit this prayer in the name of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, our divine reminder, servant and warning in Jesus in our midst. And we as a brother and sisterhood, Amar, say, Amen. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Remember, never be the aggressor in word or deed. If anyone fight with you, fight with them in the name of Allah, and may Allah grant you victory.